um, just appreciate those that were um, here to take care of and serve the church. So just a couple of quick announcements. Um, the Great Give Back is this Saturday, uh, August 20th from noon to 2 over in the education building in our, the main doors. And so if you know anyone that um, needs some assistance along that line, we've got the Penny Lewis Foundation helping out with shoes again. And then my uh, brother and my and sister keepers um, with Iveta. She has got products there to help out um, as far as shampoo, conditioner, toothpaste, and um, body wash. Those are also still some items that we um, still are in need of. And so if you want to help out, bring those by and put them in the office. Um, we can get them to her since um, she's got a little uh, storage area in the basement of the uh, office building. And so um, if you'd like to help out in one of those areas, um, we would appreciate that. And um, if you like to spread the word and make sure that especially those in the neighborhood, anybody that's kind of fallen through the cracks and some of the other issues or um, opportunities that we're just there to be able to help them and to be a blessing. Also, um, tonight with the, they are having a, a kind of a back to school um, fun time over there in the education building tonight for the students. So afterwards, we have the snow cone. We went ahead and just bought a snow cone machine, just felt let of the Lord, that was a good thing to do. And so um, we do have a snow cone machine going for the kids. And after service, if you want a snow cone, head on over. Um, you're not getting in the car with me, so you do whatever you want. So, uh, but uh, go ahead and go over afterwards, and uh, we'll be uh, handing out some free snow cones there and just uh, mingling around some. And so if you want to do that, that would be be great. So they're having a good time over there already. Um, cafeteria area downstairs was full of the kids having a good time. The, the food looks great. Uh, um, I like to have a good group show up, but if the good group shows up, that means there's no uh, leftovers for Dennis. So um, kind of good and bad in that one. So but anyway, why don't we stand? We'll open in a word of prayer tonight. The Lord is good. Um, we are, he is a God that is worthy of praise. He is moving and manifesting in our lives in ways that we're not even aware of. I believe tonight that if you are receptive, God has something he wants to say, something do, to do in you or through you. He is a God that is present with us. He spoke to Joshua when he was about to enter into the promised land and to lead the children of Israel. And God speaks to him in Joshua chapter 1, I believe it is, where he stops him and he says, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. We oftentimes in our theological realm, we kind of have a concept of God is with us. I just can't get away from that phrase, though, the last week or so. And you know, I was on vacation. It was a, just a wonderful time just to, to um, just, uh, just saturate myself with, with just spending time in the Word and just meditating on phrases. And when... It just really just impacted me in a way where God says, as I was, so I will be. The emphasis was not just that I'm going to hang out with you. The emphasis, what I did, I'm going to continue to do. And so tonight as we worship the Lord, as he was with Moses, so he will be with you. As he was with Jesus, so he will be with you. I mean, it starts to ignite our praises a little bit. It starts to turn up our expectation for just a few moments that we're not just in the presence of the Lord, of which that is wonderful, and please don't misunderstand me. But I want you to know that the Lord, as he was with Moses, and when he lifted up the rod and the Red Sea split, when he was with Moses, uh, when he threw into the, the tree of on obedience and turned the bitter water into sweet, uh, as he was with Moses, and the children of Israel and their disobedience, and yet when they lifted up the, the, the serpent on the stick that they were able to turn to it and were miraculously healed. As it was Moses that went up the, the mountain and came down with the tabernacle, or the, 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 the stones that had God's handwriting on them, the Ten Commandments, as I was with Moses. So tonight I want you to think for just a few moments as we are worshiping the Lord that it's more than just being in his presence he's not just in the room but as he was with Moses so he is with us to be able to perform his greatness to be able to demonstrate that no matter what's against us that the Lord is with us to put us over no matter what insurmountable situation is facing us God can do something that's never done been done before He's not just there to hear our cries of whining or complaining. He's there to be able to say, 
as I was with Moses, so I'm with you. And I can do miracles in your life just as easy because as I was, so I will be. He can't change. And so, Father, we come into your presence. No. Father, we come with an awareness of your presence. An awareness that in this world, it's constantly wearing us out. This world and the problems that we face, the emotional drain that it puts upon us, our physical being, our, our mental stability even. It drains us. But as you were with Moses, so you will be with us. You will be the strength of our life. You will be the voice that we speak. You will be the word that we declare. You will be the, 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 the light that gives us the guidance. You will be the the. the the, the, the pillar of fire at night. You will be the cloud during the day. You will be the shield that is around about us. You will provide for us, Lord, if, if necessary, just right outside our tent. Dear God, you'll make provision available for us. You're not, you're not restrained by the problems that we're facing. You're not worried about the situations that we're encountering. You're not consumed with the lack that we're facing, but as you with Moses, you're going to be with us, and you are always going to be that God that's more than enough. And so tonight, Lord, as we worship you, we refuse to allow our problems to consume us. We refuse our flesh to dictate to us. We refuse to allow our emotions to even say whether we feel like it or not. We will praise the Lord because there's always something about you that's worth praising. There is a declaration of your greatness in our life. So we decide, Lord, right now, to praise and to magnify the almighty God who is with us in this space, who is here to transform and change us and to reveal your amazing grace, that you have greater things that you want to accomplish and to do in our life. And we appreciate a God who's not limited by us, but wants to reveal your just awesome generosity of greatness through your church in this time. In Jesus' name.
above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. You've done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. in your freedom awake and alive oh jesus our savior your name lifted high oh god you have done great things you have done great things yes you have oh yes you have father we just rejoice in you this evening god you have done sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life. set free oh Jesus I sing for all that you've done for me yes, we do. Thank you. who brings our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king of glory the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you laid down your life that I would be set free oh Jesus I sing for all that you've done for me worthy is the lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you lay down your life, that I would be set free. I sing for all that you've done for me. This is amazing grace. This 
This is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You laid down your life That I would be set free Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. You lay down your life that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we just worship you. Father, just one more time, we just lift our voices unto the Lord that is worthy of our praise. Father, we just thank you that you are the almighty one that has demonstrated your, your favor, your grace in our life. We just trust in you, Father God, to, to take care of our life, to provide for us. You created us, Lord. You have provided a way of salvation for us. You've made a way, dear God, to have a relationship with you. You brought us into the amazing family of God, not on our own abilities, but because of the precious blood of Jesus that cleanses us and makes us whole. So, Lord, I just thank you. We thank you for this amazing grace. Thank you that this grace continues to work. This favor of God is upon us. And Father, we just thank you that your hand of favor is upon us. That no weapon formed against us shall prosper. That any tongue that rises up against us shall be condemned. That there is no worries in this world that is greater than the trust we can have in a God that will take care of us. Lord, we just release the favor of God upon our life. We, dear God, just thank you that there is a standard lifted up around about us by the greater one. And that the enemy is not able to overcome us. But we are more than conquerors in our life. Lord, I thank you that even this week we're going to be some conquering going on. Even this week some battles are going to be won. Even this week, we're going to declare that Jesus is the greater one. Even this week, we will proclaim and demonstrate that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So, Father, we just thank you that the blessings of the Lord are coming upon us. The sickness and disease has to leave us. Strategic plans of the enemy are defeated. And the will of the Father God is released and fulfilled in our life for your glory. We are a people that are an open book of the goodness of God to the world that is around us in Jesus' name. And Father, we just, according to your word, we pray one for another. We pray, Father God, for, for health and wholeness in bodies. We pray for peace in minds. We pray for blessings, dear God, of provision in our lives. We pray, dear God, for hope to come alive in people's hearts. We pray, Father God, for the eye of faith to be revealed and revelation knowledge coming alive on the inside of us. Oh, I thank you, Father, that we are filled with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And we are walking worthy of the Lord. We are a pleasing people unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Turn to your neighbor and tell him the devil's worried. The devil, the devil's worried. The devil is worried. Amen. Oh, I'm so thankful to be here with you and to, to be able to share the word of the Lord with you. It's been, been a, a few days, been a few minutes, been, I've been with you and seen your smiles and heard your amens and, uh, and miss just being in, uh, together with you in the presence of the Lord. But I've been so thankful to hear some of the testimonies. Uh, Paul, I've been sharing on the testimony. I talked to other individuals that God's moving. I'm so thankful. You know, uh, at that reference that I made earlier that when God spoke to Joshua and said, Moses is dead, you see, the people were very concerned because Moses had done everything. They were kind of worried, now what's going to happen? You know, uh, and I know it's maybe unconscious sometimes, but people think, well, if pastor's not there, then, well, what's going to happen? Well, pastor's not the one that makes it happen. The Holy Spirit is the one that makes it happen. It's the word of the Lord that makes it happen. It is your receptivity to the faith in what God wants to do is what makes it happen. And so I'm just so thankful that when I'm not here, amazing things happen. 
And, and so just going to continue that amazing things are going to continue to happen because we serve an amazing God. I want to speak a word to you tonight if I could as a pastor. I want to speak a word of encouragement of, uh, and in that it is a word of discipline that I want to challenge you with. I'm not going to move till I hear an amen. Somebody, a word of discipline that we're going to challenge ourselves in. And you'll find it back in the Old Testament. And if you want to quickly jump back to Psalm 34 in the Old Testament. Psalm 34. And tonight, I want to challenge us. I want to prepare us. I want to encourage us. Uh, my message simply is don't let, don't let it take your praise. And you can put it whatever it is. And even if it's a somebody, don't let it take your praise from you. I, I want to I stir us up tonight. I want us to focus on the almightiness of God. Uh, has anybody got a prayer request tonight? You got anybody got a problem you're dealing with? Anybody got a situation that's tormenting you? Anybody got something that's keeping you up at night or, or seemingly draining you through the day? Oh, we all got lots of it's, don't we? But I want to just challenge you, encourage you, remind you, don't let it, don't let it take your praise from you on the good God that we're serving and what he wants to accomplish and fulfill in your life have you ever been tempted have you ever been tempted to put your praise on pause because of the problems that you're dealing with how can I has anybody anybody other than Dennis had that situation where you said I, I know I should praise the Lord but I'm going to pause that for a minute because I got some problems I'm dealing with and I need to I need to do a backhanded prayer request and I will you pray about me because I'm feeling so bad and so lonely and miserable and all these bad things are happening to me and I don't deserve it and, and I'm a good person and and why is these things happening to me and we need to just take the pause off of our praise and just be determined making a declaration deep within us that we are people that will praise the Lord anyway. And no matter what it is and who it brings with it, we're still going to praise the Lord in our life. And our praise is not some superficial thing, but it is an overflowing, a gusher that comes from the inside of us. Uh, I just got a, a phone call from a frantic neighbor of, uh, that lives uh, right beside where my mother's uh, 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 kind of quadplexes there's four of these are all together and of course my mom passed away and we we're in the process of selling the facility their home there and it's empty and the neighbors have been trying to get a hold of my sister because her the hot water heater basically has uh, uh, the bottom of it must have gone out and so for several hours today water has been running through my mom's facility and water didn't realize it was supposed to stop at the, at the at the wall and so it went under the wall into the one beside her and then under the wall to the other one beside her and then under the wall to the next one beside her and they just kept pouring and just kept pouring and I thought oh how terrible but I thought you know what that's the way we ought to be when we blow a, a, cask, a casket, blow a gasket, well, maybe we ought to blow some caskets too, but when we blow a gasket, folks, it ought to be a continual flow of praise unto the Almighty God in our life. It should know no restraint. There should be no pause button in our life. Psalm 34, verse 1, simply says, I will praise the Lord no matter what happens. I ain't going to move. I get, there we go. I'm, I will. I will. I will. I'll do it. I don't care if you do it or not. I'm going to do it. I will do it. I will. It didn't say I will feel like it and then I'll do it. Didn't say if God does something new, I'll do it. It doesn't say if God does this, then I will do that. There is a bold declaration, and, and I'm encouraging you as people of faith to have a discipline in your life that no matter what it is, I will praise the Lord. And as the enemy and just life throws stuff at you, you take that as an opportunity to declare, my God, still greater and still worthy of praise no matter what this is. The psalmist David here said, I will praise the Lord no matter what happens. I'm reading from the Living Bible, if you would allow me. I will constantly speak of his glories and grace do we have a little room to grow do we have a little discipline yet in our life that we need to put into practice 
This is not to discourage any of us, but it is to remind us that there's a reason that, that David seen this, taught this, encouraged this. He revealed to us that there must be an internal declaration uh, from our heart. Not a half-hearted thing, not just try to get enough people around us or singing our favorite song. Not just a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night for us people. But there is a continual overflow that comes because I know my God. I know his goodness. I know his grace. I, I know what I, sh I should not get anything from God. No, that's not good English. But I don't deserve anything from God. And yet because of his grace, he said he will bless us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Isn't that amazing? He didn't say you won't have problems. He just said no weapon formed against you shall prosper. There's going to be weapons. There's going to be problems that are going to come your way. But there's a God in heaven that said, I will transform and change the situation that you're facing. I just need you to keep on praising because when you do so, it doesn't change God. It keeps you from being encapsulated by the emotions of defeat. It keeps you from becoming so mentally consumed with the problem that I I just don't know how God could even do this. That's because you're not God and God's got a million ways and he could do it. So you just need to keep on. I'm just going to thank you, Father. I have no idea how you're going to do it, but I praise you that you are the Lord God, my healer. You are the Lord God, my pro. I praise you that no matter how bad things are around me, I've got one that is with me. And if God be for me, who can be against me in my life? Don't let it take your praise from you. Don't let your mind be so fixed on the problems that you forget there is a great God in heaven. There still is a God that sits on the throne and still rules. Don't let your mouth be used to confirm what is when faith speaks about what God is able to do. And just go ahead and have that bold confession of faith that comes out of you. Don't let your words discourage those that are around you when we are called to encourage one another in the faith. I will praise the Lord at all times. Everything in your life, here's something you're not going to want to like to hear, but here you need to hear it anyway. Everything in your life is in transition, but God. Isn't that good to know? Everything is changing around you. You can't stop the kids from growing. You can't stop from aging. You can't stop the bills from coming. You can't stop what people are saying about you. You can't, everything is in flux around you. You can't keep it from stopping and doing. But there is an almighty God that says, I am perfect and I don't need to change because I am. And I can't be better. As my grandkids would say, I don't get no gooder. It is as he is. He does not grow in grace. He cannot in, enlarge in greatness. He is the I am. And so he is, he is fixed. He is stable. He is the rock. He is the foundation. Those are all immovable things in our life that we build upon. And we start to remind ourselves of who he is. Then we have a reason to praise him. We have a reason to declare, this is what my life is built upon, the great I am. The psalmist David here in Psalm 34, and we'll get to it in a minute. I'm, uh, we'll read a few more verses, but I'm just trying to put it in context, if you could, because sometimes when we read these verses, we think, oh, well, it must have been because he was in the palace with a cool breeze that night, and this psalm just kind of came up on him. Sometimes we think he must have had the choir behind him and, and singing real loud, and so that must have been good. But if you'll stop and you'll look at the history of Psalm 34, it is an interesting that it is written in an, an alphabetical acrostic here with the Hebrew letters. It was written in a way that you would be able to remember this psalm. This is written in a way that you could teach others this psalm. It's kind of like when we do the, you know, put, it, put the ABCs to a, to a rhythm or, or whether we put you know, the, uh, the different notes on the, uh, on the scale to a, a rhyme so that you can remember it. And this Psalm 34 has been written in a way, not just to declare who God is, but a way to remind us who God is. To remind us of how to deal with situations in life when we've got problems. 
and to teach others. And to teach others. Some of us need to be teaching our kids and our grandkids. Some of us need to be teaching our neighbor kids. Some of us need to teach our older grown-up kids. But we still need to be teaching. We need to be disciplined disciples that are learning, practicing, and then reproducing. You see, this psalm was written when David had killed Goliath after, and he he defeated Goliath, and the people were all chanting after him, and he went to be in the in the palace with Saul for a while, but Saul got paranoid about him. So David realized, if I don't get out of here, I'm gonna Saul's gonna have me killed. I mean, he didn't have just one of the bad guys in the neighborhood after him. He had the king after him. And so David leaves, and he leaves, and for some reason he thought if I would go and hide amongst the Philistines, maybe no one would find me. What had David just been doing? He went and killed the Philistine champion, Goliath. And for some reason, the Philistines weren't real receptive to him. And so he had to escape and flee from the Philistines where he thought he could hide out. So he's a refuge. And he finds refuge in a cave. A cold, isolated situation where it wasn't his fault what was happening to him in life. Even the fact that he had obeyed God and was a great blessing to his nation by the killing of Goliath. And yet... He is running for his life. His own king. The enemy. And he hides out in a cave. And when he's in this cave. Is when this psalm seems to come to him. And we're going to find out that there's some people that came and and gathered with him in this cave. And that he taught them this psalm also. These individuals that came and gathered with him, that he, he shared this with, I wonder, I wonder who they were. And I'm, you won't need to, to look the verse up. I'll read it to you in just a moment here. But, but I wonder who came and gathered with, with David in the cave. I, I wonder if it was the choir from the priests that thought that it would be good to go with him. Or, or maybe some of the wise leaders that were attracted to David. Or maybe it was some of the mighty soldiers that would hopefully defend him. I wonder what kind of people, have you, have you ever been in a situation where you feel like you're running for your life and some of the people that start to collect around you aren't necessarily helpful, aren't necessarily encouraging? The scripture tells us in 1 Samuel 22, if you allow me just to read verses 1 and 2, it says that David therefore departed from there and escaped to the cave. So that when his brothers and his father's house heard that he had went down, they, uh, down there, uh, they went to meet him. Verse uh, 2, it says, and everyone who, here it is. He gives us a list of who gathered to be with David when he was running for his life. Everyone who was distra- uh, that was distressed, everyone who was in debt, and everyone who was discontent. The literal translation is, had a bitter soul about it. Ever been around someone with a bitter soul? Mm. And, and, and they gathered to him, so he became captain over them, and there were about 400 men with them. We have at least 400 men that are either distressed, in debt, or discontent, and bitter, and they come to David, and they're hanging out, hanging out with him in a cave. Isn't that a wonderful group of people? to be with when you're going through difficult situations. But here's the key, folks. David allowed God to use him, to speak through him, to influence others around him. He had something on the inside of him that was able to influence those that were around him instead of allowing the complainers, the discontent, And you know, most folks, when they're in debt, they're not saying, oh, praise God for the interest rate. They're usually complaining along the way also. And in this situation, David goes and he transforms these individuals. We'll find later in Scripture, they turned into the mighty men of valor that was in his life. 
So this is what I want to make sure that you are, folks. I want to make sure, you know, when they talk about influencers, YouTubers these days. You're all, you may not be a YouTuber, but you need to be an influencer. And the way that you're going to influence, verse 1, is critical. Where you will make a declaration, a determination, that you are the one that is going to be praising the Lord for who He is and what He has done. And when others gather around you, that are going to be attracted to you, that are disgruntled, that are complainers, that are in debt, that are discouraged, that you don't say, man, I've got to get away from them people. No, you need to say, I need to influence those people. I need to let them know about this God that I'm so excited about. I didn't need to do more than just invite them to church. I need to introduce them to Jesus. I need to let them know about this God that I am serving and following after. You know, it's the easiest thing in the world is to join into a conversation with complainers. It's the easiest thing in the world to talk about how high gas prices are. Easiest thing in the world to complain about service. Easiest thing, and not service here, I'm talking about, you know, like at a restaurant. Hopefully, it's not easy to complain about service. It's easy to complain about what people have done for you. It's easy to be able to complain, but but it is a determination and declaration of a spiritual mature individual who says, no, I'm I'm going to use my voice to praise the Lord. I am going to influence those that are around me. You see, problems will happen in our life. We would all agree here in this situation, it would have been easy for David to complain. He hadn't done anything wrong. Have you ever been in trouble and you didn't do it? Now, it just means you didn't get caught for a lot of other things you did do. But I mean, in that particular situation, you didn't do it. We've all been in situations where, where we need God's provision in our life and should be in the palace and we find ourselves just hanging out in a cave. We understand that there are needy people that are around us, but there's times, God, I need help. Don't send me anybody else asking for needy something. There is time where I just, God, I just, not one more, these people drain me. Oh, thank God for the greater one that's on the inside of us. Amen. That we're going to influence those that are around us. That we're not going to be complainers, but we are going to make sure that we are praisers. We are praising God for his grace and his goodness in our life. This might be not helping you, but I'm sure there will be somebody this week that you'll be able to share this word. Let's go back to Psalm 34 and just read a couple of these verses. And then as we're reading them, remember he's written it in a way that people could memorize it, that they could rehearse it, they could, they could say it over and over again, and they could teach it to one another. And, 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 and as someone maybe that they are complaining or they are dealing with a depressing or they are bitter about something that someone else could hate, but remember what's the, what David taught us. And they could then rehearse and they could share this. But let's listen, I will praise the Lord no matter what happens. I will continually speak of his glorious grace. Verse 2, I will boast in all his kindness to me. Let, listen, let all, I'm reading out the Living Translation. Let all who are discouraged take heart. Remember who we're talking to, that group that came to him. So what are the discouraged supposed to do? They're supposed to take heart. Let us praise the Lord together and exalt his name. Let us do it together. Let's get it going. Let's stir it up amongst ourselves. If you're discouraged, hey, there's nothing wrong to saying admitting it, but let's be transformed by the presence of God. Get around a couple of people and say, help me, help me, help me. I'm a little discouraged. Share some words to me. Share what the Bible says about me. We're not trying to outdo one another on how bad life is. You think you got it bad? Let me tell you the way I got it. You think you got a situation? You got that pain? I got a pain pain back here has been here for a week or you think that pain's bad I got one on both sides I got both sides I got both sides 
we always try to outdo somebody. And what we need to stop and say, oh, you got a pain. I got a pain too. But I want you to know that there's one that has delivered us from pain. And let's just start to gather together and start to worship the Lord. Let's thank him that he is still. As he was with Moses, so he's going to be with us. He is the Lord God, our healer. He hasn't changed. Let's stir it up amongst ourselves. Let's, let's, let's focus on exalting the Lord together. Unfortunately, folks, we've even taken prayer requests into a perverted way to communicate to people how bad I got it. I grew up in a church where we would take prayer requests on Sunday nights, and there would be times people would say, I have an unspoken prayer request. Then someone else would say, I have a special unspoken prayer request. Which just means that that, that that one's doubled down on whatever you got. I got more of it. Don't know what that one's about. And you don't know what I, but it's really bad. It's just really bad. It's time for us to exalt the Lord. That's what we're supposed to do. I'm not saying that we shouldn't turn in prayer requests. I'm just saying, look, folks, we need to just take the time to make sure that he is on our mind. And that we are disciplined about that. Verse 4 goes on and says, I will cry to him. And he answers me. I, I, he freed me from all my fears. Can I hit a shout from anybody on that one? I mean, this is a guy that, that people are after him to kill him. I, maybe you got some bill collectors. Maybe you got some problems in your life. But this guy had people that were trying to kill him. And he said, the Lord's delivered me out of all my fears. I have no fears in my life. He goes on, verse 5. Others, too, were, were, were radiant at what he did to them. There, there was no outcast-like uh, look of rejection. Listen, verse 6. This poor man cried to the Lord, and the Lord answered. And the Lord heard him and saved him out of his troubles. Folks, y'all going to have some troubles. You're going to have troubles in your life. But you've got a God that wants to deliver you out of all your troubles in your life. And so we want to praise him for who he is. We're going to face those troubles. We're going to face those problems. But David said, this poor man, this poor man, he lives in a cave. You, you want to know what dirt poor means? <laughs> That's dirt poor when you're living in a cave. And he said, but my God, my God's going to cry, take care of me. He's going to provide for me. Verse 7 goes on. It says, And for the angel of the Lord guards and rescues all those who reverence him. Oh, isn't it wonderful? We got supernatural angels round about us. You might not be able to see them. You might not be able to feel them. And you don't need to know their name. You just need to know that they are there. And that we can glorify. God, thank you that you love us so much. Lord, we just praise you that you loved us so much. That you even gave us things that we cannot see. Hey, angels that excel in strength. We don't have to be afraid of demonic attacks. We don't have to be afraid of the enemy. enemy spiritually speaking, there's more that are with us than are against us along the way. And he said, even the angels that are there to, to help. He goes on here. Verse 8, it says, Oh, but, uh, uh, but it says, Oh, put uh, God to the test and see how kind he is. Now, folks, I want you to know that there's very few times in the scripture there it says, Put God to the test. Very few times that we, the creation, have, have any kind of a right to test God. But he's saying here, you can trust him. If you're testing him, basically you're trusting him. If I say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put a, a, a board across the ditch and then I'm going to test it, what am I doing? I got to put my foot out there. I got to start, I'm trusting that it's going to hold me. If I didn't think it would hold me at all, if it's just some little twig, I ain't going to test that. But if I think it's going to work, I'm, I've got my faith starting to work in that direction. I've got trust that it can do it along the way. Folks, when we start to say, I'm going to test the Lord, it's going to say, I'm putting his word out there before me, and I, I'm going to start putting some weight on the word. I'll be honest, I ain't all the way there yet, but I'm moving in that direction. This scripture keeps coming to me, and, and I just keep thinking about it, and it's, it's better than what I think God could ever do, but I'm going to start putting some weight on that verse and see whether I can trust it, and it keeps holding, and it keeps holding, and it keeps holding, and then another verse comes, and another verse comes, and another verse comes, and we just 
just keep holding us up and we're testing the Lord not in a bad way but in an increasing trustful way along the way he said Paul put, put your put God to the test see how kind he is see for yourself the way his mercies oh thank God for his mercy thank God his mercies are new every morning thank God for his mercies in our life he says his mercies shower down on all those who trust in him if you belong to the Lord reverence him for everyone who does this has everything he needs it doesn't say that he has in the sense of a possession but he has the access to the one that is able to meet all of their needs in any situation that we can trust him without seeing these things come to pass in our present but we can believe that he is able to do it and it just starts to again explode that praise in our life I don't see it but I know I got it I don't see it but by God's word my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory I'm gonna put some weight on that scripture and see if it starts to hold up in my life I might not see my body constantly healed but the scripture says lay hands on the sick and they shall recover I'm putting some weight on that scripture and I'm gonna start to see some recovering going on in my life life I'm gonna start to test the Lord and see what he wants see the faithfulness and then I need to be praising him for his faithfulness along the way verse 10 says even strong lions sometimes go hungry but those of us who reverence the Lord will never lack any good thing if you don't have that underlined in your Bible you need to underline that right now they that reverence the Lord will never lack any good thing oh what a what a wonderful promise to start to put some pressure on that again it doesn't mean that you got to have every good thing stored up in your house you've got every good thing stored up where moth and thieves and robbers and and decay and an interest rate can't get a hold of and inflation can't get a hold of in your life that we can trust in him verse 11 sons and daughters come and listen let us teach you the the importance of trusting and fearing in the Lord that's kind of the the center of what what David is getting to here he's talking about the greatness of God but there comes a point where we need taught these things if I need taught that means I don't know it I can't do what I don't know I can't say what I haven't learned I can't explain what hasn't been told me and David is saying to these, these, these gripers, these complainers, the, these people that have been on, on hard times, they got a bitter spirit about him. He says, come here, you need to be taught there's a different way of life than complaining about problems. There's a different way of life than complaining about God. There's a different way. You need to be taught to trust and to reverence the Lord in your life. It's interesting, and I shared this uh, Monday ago uh, on Monday prayer, that um, it has been proven that if we, if, we, if we hang around people that are chronic complainers, it has an impact on our brain. That the average person without any, without any intentionality will complain 15 to 30 times a day. Do you know anybody? Do you know anybody that could do that without even, even thinking about it? With 15 to 30 times a day, they can complain about something. But at Stanford University, they went and did a, a study, and they found that people that were exposed to someone, whether they did the complaining themselves or whether they were around someone that was complaining for 30 minutes or more, they went ahead and they did an MRI on them and they could find in that brain scan there was actually damage to the brain. Let me, uh, please just don't, don't, don't be offended by me, but complaining will make, will give you brain damage. I wish I could put on some people's, over their mouth, you know, complaining has proven to cause brain damage. Even secondhand complaining can cause brain damage. Well, if that can cause brain damage, what can praising do? It can be medicine to us. It can 
restore us. It can refresh us. It can impact us. Uh, that that, that the, the warning sh- label should be, if you're around us, you're going to hear about Jesus. It, it should be a known that it, it's just what's What's on the inside just is a flow that comes from, on, from us. That we understand that we can trust in the Lord. We need to be taught these things because complaining seems to come natural, we could say. Could we say that? Praising is a discipline that I must build into my life because I value who God is and I will obey his word in my life. Therefore, this thing needs to change. And I need to control my tongue for the purpose that God has created it and not to cause damage to people that are around you. Verse 12 goes on and says, do you want good life? Do anybody here want a good life? Anybody want a good life? Well, the scripture says, here it is, living translation, then watch your tongue. We could stop pause and go home right there folks watch your tongue if you want a good life you'll eat the fruit of your lips the the tongue and it's going to what what you're what you're allowing to come out what you're listening to and you are taking taking intentionality to allow to come out of you He goes on here and he says, if you want to to live a good life and watch your tongue, uh, keep your lips from lying, turn from all known sin and spend your time in doing good. Try to live in peace with everyone. I like the uh, the living word here. It says, work hard at it. Have you ever found some people, you just got to work hard at it. I mean, some people like you guys, it's easy to live at peace with you. It's easy. But some people, you got to work hard at it. But we need to be doing it. Verse 15, for the eyes of the Lord are intently watching over all all who, who live good lives. And he gives attention when they cry to him. But the Lord has made up his mind to wipe out even the memory of evil people, evil men from the earth. Verse 17, yes, the Lord hears the good man when he cries to him for help and saves him out of all his troubles. There we are again, folks. We're in trouble. We're in trouble. We're, we got trouble all around us. We got problems. We got situations. But he's saying, I, I'm not going to keep you from being in trouble. You're in this world. In this world, there is going to be troubles. I'm just going to be your deliverer. I'm going to be the one who's going to deliver you from these situations that you're facing if you will turn to me, if you will take control over your tongue, if you're going to trust in me. It's not in a sense of works. It's not in a sense of of if you don't do all 10 of these things and I'm not going to do anything in your life. But what he is saying is when you start to discipline yourself, you're living a life that God can bless. Just turn to your neighbor and just say, live a life God can bless. That's it, folks. Live a life God can bless. Live a life that it's easy for the hand of God to come upon you. Live a life that that, that glorifies him, expects him to move in your life. That when troubles come, that you don't say, God, why would you let this happen to me? But you stand there and say, God, thank you. You're going to be my deliverer once again. Uh, That when there are problems come into our life, it's like, God, uh, why did you allow that person to say that or do that about me? No, we just need to stop and say, God, I just thank you what you're saying about me and what you're talking about me, and you know me better than they do. They might be fibbing on me, but you know the truth about me, God, and you're still speaking the the word of God over my life, so I thank you for that. Verse 18, it says, The Lord is close to those whose hearts are breaking. He rescues those who are humbly sorry for their sins. I don't know what translation you might have to pull out on that one, but uh, they're living here. He, those that are, are humble and sorry about their sin. Let me say this real quickly as a pastor. This problem that we have in the church in America is people are not sorry for their sin. They're sorry they got caught in their sin. They're more, they're more consumed with what people think about them and whether they get revealed than 
the God who knows all and they think that they're keeping it from him. I don't want any of us to think that we have to live in a sense of guilt or condemnation, but in a sense of an awareness that God knows all of our mistakes, all of our failures. He even knows the ones that you're going to make that you haven't made yet. And I'm not saying that, we're, that you're a bunch of old sinners and you're just stuck in some kind of rut. But I'm just saying that there's, there's a possibility one of you might sin before you die, all right? He knows that and he still loves us. And when we're aware of that, there should be a sense of real humility in our life. That there's a God that still, still, our hearts should break when we mess up. It's very easy for us, especially in this day and age where everything is publicized and put out there in magazines and on the internet. And anybody that messes up can, gets, gets put out there. And we look at those people and they, they shouldn't have done that. And they shouldn't have. But the fact is, folks, it should break our heart when we see Christians that are taken back into the control of sin. It should cause us to stop and say, wow, did I, should I have prayed for that person? Do I pray for my pastor? Do I pray for people within my church? Is there a sense of humility about me that I understand I, there's, I have the potential to sin and I need to, to have a, a broken heart in the sense that I, I never want to do something that would be dishonoring to my Father God that would grieve the Holy Spirit I truly am sorry for the sin sin not only in my life not only past life but as we go forward, that we, we, we have a sense of, we just don't want this. Don't want this. 19 says, he says, the, the good man does not escape all troubles. He has them too. But the Lord helps him in each and every one. Not even one of his bones will be broken. Calamity will surely overtake the wicked. Heaven, heavy uh, penalties will come upon those that, that hate good. But as for those who serve the Lord, do I have anyone here that wants to serve the Lord? But, but as for those that serve the Lord, He will redeem them. Everyone who takes refuge in Him will be freely pardoned. Wow! What a reason to rejoice. What a reason to be praising God. It's not because he said you, you're going to get back into the palace and everybody's going to love you and they're going to be doing parades for you again, David. But he's saying, I, I, I just know this, that, 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 that my heart's going to stay right with God. And when my heart's right with God, I can trust him to redeem me out of every problem that comes my way. And I'm, I refuse to, to, to be a person that's going to complain and hang around those that are complaining without influence influencing them. I, I'm not going to just, just go hang out in a, in, a, in a back room somewhere all the time and just pray in the Spirit so bad people don't influence my life. No, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world means also that I can get out there and I will be a presenter. I will be an influencer to the world that is around me. But I've got to have the discipline of controlling what's coming out of my mouth. Real quickly, if you would just write down the reference in James chapter 3, verses 11 through 13, it says, Does a fountain send forth the same place sweet water and bitter? Can a fig tree, my brother, bear olive tree berries, either a vine figs? So can uh, no fountain uh, yield both salt water and fresh? Who is a wise man? And endures with knowledge among you. Let him show out of a good conversation or conduct his works with meekness and wisdom. Out of the same fountain, out of the same resource. And in this context, we can certainly say out of our mouth. He said, you can't be having salt water and good fresh water coming out of the same fountain. And we as believers need to be determined we are going to be people who have fresh water coming from us. A continual fountain that flows from deep within us that is going to, to, to flow to those that are around us. 
The old King James says it a, a conversation, but actually it's referring to your conduct. But your conduct and your conversation should be so closely together. It, it should be your actions and your verbiage should clarify and should be confirming to one another. We shouldn't say that we go to church and then act like the devil along the way. We, we got to have the same stuff coming out of us that we're doing in our lives. And I just want to encourage you folks that if, if you'll just continually be determined what that first verse says as we close tonight, that I will continually praise the Lord. I, I will continually, no, no matter what happens, I will praise the Lord. I will declare his goodness and his mercy. I will encounter troubles, but I will praise the Lord. I will encounter situations that are contrary uh, uh, to, to what I want to go through in life, but I will praise the Lord. I will have confidence in his redeeming power in my life. What are you saying? Uh, uh, what is it in your life that, that you're allowing to, to control you? Don't let the it take your praise from you. Don't push the pause button on your praise to talk about the complaining problems that you're facing in your life. Keep your focus on who God is and what he wants to do in you and through you in your life. Does anybody feel like praising the Lord tonight? I mean, is anybody thankful for what the Lord has done? This message by no means has been any kind of a weight of condemnation. I'm not here to say, y'all need to change your vocabulary. I'm here to say, we all need to praise the Lord more in our life. We all need to get it back on track again and get our focus on what God is able to do no matter what we're facing in our life. Heavenly Father, thank you for your presence with us. The presence that wants to demonstrate your greatness in our life. Father, first of all, I thank you that you are the Redeemer. And if any one of us in this room has never experienced that power, Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are revealing, you're speaking, you're teaching. You are, are knocking on the door of our heart and saying, if we will ask you will come in and live on the inside of us. That you will totally forgive us of all of our sin. You will make us a brand new person on the inside. And we'll have the, 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 the knowing of your presence in our life. Lord, for those of us that have been saved for a while. But maybe we haven't been acting like it. Maybe we've been, been too consumed with the, the, the challenges of life. The, the feelings of the moment. The the, the, the draining power of this world around us. Father, I just thank you for the Holy Spirit that brings to our remembrance this, this psalm and that we will declare it. We'll take at least that first verse and put it to practice in our life. And may we, may we influence others around us. May we overflow to those that are around us and demonstrate and proclaim and declare on purpose with intentionality the good God that you are. And we will see the goodness of God in manifestation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. May I encourage and remind you that when I say amen, service may be over, but God's not through. And that he is working, and I just want to say thank you for those that continue to pray one for another, encourage one another. Now, I, and I understand sometimes you got places to go, but take a few moments and maybe find somebody and, and encourage that individual. Tell them, be praying for you. Or what's something good happening in your life? And just doing something to encourage one another. Come a little early. Stay a little late. Same price. All right? So just... Go ahead, take advantage of it and be blessing. Just again, just encouraged by people that are praying afterwards and testimonies, things that are going on tonight. You can go get a snow comb uh, over there if you want to. But uh, I just want to encourage you. Let's, if we believe this, let's practice it. Let's practice it more than just in the front row. Let's practice it in our lifestyle and everything that we do. God bless you. We love you. And we'll see most of you on Sunday morning.